professor, professor Schippers, may I ask you some questions? Yes, of course. What do you want to know, Rico? We're in your home. Is this how you typically dress, uh, Michaela? <laughs> Not in my home, <laughs> but we're going to an event uh, with uh, Jordan Peterson. He is in the Rai uh, today in Amsterdam yeah. and he invited me to come and I've worked with him. So I said yes, of course. So later this evening we will talk to, uh, to Mr. Peterson Yes. and see him at work in uh, Rai in Amsterdam. Yes. What I wanted to talk to you about here is what I see happening. Everybody sees that happening in, in, uh, globally in the world with an uh, escalating conflict in Ukraine, where Russia uh, will allow s certain parts of Ukraine to be become part of Russia, and then NATO and EU on the other hand saying, well, that's not going to happen, and then, and then we have for the first time a real conflict at the border of, of Russia. And we see stock markets Did going it? down, taking plunges. We see the British pound being pounded. <laughs> losing its value, uh, same for the euro, yes. interest rates going up, making the, the, so it's a technical, but you see on multiple levels, um, you see the politicians, yes. the managers of the world not being able to change mm -hmm. the downward trajectory. Right, right. It's a downward spiral and we're dwindling and we are unable to stop it. So what it reminded me of was, uh, it's called an end mill. And, and, as and, in, uh, and, and ants. Animals. Yeah, ants, yeah. like uh, the, okay. the, the, the industrious, uh, most industrious animals <laughs> on earth, they say yeah. sometimes. And uh, so you have these army ants, and they sometimes uh, kind of, uh, they follow each other's pheromones, so this, this, uh, with their, um, um, the smell. With their smell. And what they do is they, together, they uh, take on a prey, because the prey is too big, they can't take it on, on themselves, but they do it with yes. a whole big group. And that works quite well, uh, very efficient, and evolutionary, this is a very good trait to have. The only thing is that sometimes uh, a part of the army uh, gets lost, or uh, even a big army gets lost, and they get into this circle, and this is called a death spiral, actually, and they keep on walking in the circle and following each other's pheromones. The army of ants, of army ants, will just yes, be... Yes, be going, going, and going, and going, and they follow the one before the, just before them. And they go round in circles and circles until they collapse, actually. And it's been noticed even sometimes that the dead uh, ants are being pushed out of the circle, and then the rest goes on until the whole yeah, army Dice. Dice, basically from exhaustion. So what I'm describing you as current affairs in the Netherlands and abroad <laughs> reminds you of those ants. Exactly, because uh, what it seems like, um, and in management it's also been described uh, as for a dwindling company, companies also get into the spiral of negativity. And they make decisions over and over again, dysfunctional decisions, but they try to get out of this uh, uh, situation. break the downward spiral. Yes, they're basically unable to break this. So, so how do we f you're, <laughs> you're my beacon of hope. How do we fix this? How, <laughs> how do we snap out of it? I, I, will, I will get to that, but first I want to describe more, a little bit in more in detail, because the first step is to be aware what's going on, what is happening. And a lot of people see it, but they don't, um, they don't know what to do about it. So they feel helpless, they feel also trapped. And this f uh, feeling of entrapment is uh, very right, because you are entrapped and we're all in this circle. So some people are able to step out of that. And how do they do that? We want to know that, of course. But first we need to know what's going on. So basically what's happening is, um, and I, um, in management it's been described not very, uh, uh, not a lot, so that's why I made my own definition of it. And I started by, okay, what is it? It's continuous uh, flawed decision making, basically. Um, it's, a it's a downward spiral of um, a denial, distrust and micromanagement sets in because people want to control the situation. So the company or the CEO of the company says, we have to change this, we have to make changes, so we have to make cuts in the costs, uh, we have to lay off people, we have to... So they make all this series of decisions which make it worse instead of better. Clamp down. They clamp down, they make the company smaller instead of thinking, hey, what's going on? Can, what can we do to expand instead of... So basically they get into the circle and the circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller until they die or the company dies or a person inside can die as well, an individual. If you keep on walking the same circle your whole life, it gets smaller and smaller and then in the end, there's nothing left of you, of you as a person, you're not enthusiastic anymore. Eh? So people get really, really depressed. You sometimes see 
If you look in people's eyes, you see that their energy is gone. There's no more energy to, to be gained in these eyes. And when you get this spark back, then you see, okay, we're on a path, uh, an upward path. Yep. So what happens is also dogmatic thinking. So um, it's been said there's one truth. We have to, there's one solution that we have to come up with. And there, uh, then dogmatic thinking sets in. Um, science can give us a solution for this, uh, like it's a new religion. But there is no uh, one answer to every, pro uh, no. there's many answers and there's not a complete model of, of reality by far in science to be found. And then the last step is learned helplessness. So this learned helplessness I already described uh, before. So um, what I want to, to, to do is more clearly define what a dead spiral is, uh, describe the phenomenon in more detail and describe how you can snap out of this. Um, so now we know we are entrapped in this, at least it can be on every level, individual, group and societal level. And then um, the first step to get out of that is to realize what's going on. Okay, step out of that end mill. Where, what is going on? Why are they all walking in circles? Okay, can I help them? Can I do something to get more people out of that circle? But at least myself first. So a, a small couple of people might, uh, might do that. Um, and sometimes it helps to have a turnaround leader like on a, on a mass scale. If you look at uh, Nelson Mandela, he's a, an example of a turnaround leader. He said, okay, a lot of bad things have happened here. We have been in this downward spiral. If I want us to get into an upward spiral, we shouldn't do a blame game, for instance. If we start punishing people for all the wrongdoing, then maybe we feel good for a small moment, but then the whole society isn't uh, saved by that. So he uh, had this committee, this truth, um, and reconciliation committee he started and that's, this was to restore trust. The first step you always have to do is restore trust in, in, um, in institutions, in people, in each other and we start, you have to start collaborating again. So if you want to have this energy back into society you have to uh, make people autonomous because in a company for instance uh, that is down the drain then people come up with ideas and then nobody is listening to them. And then they are like, yeah, I had a good idea, but nobody's following up. No, follow up on every idea. Try to take it seriously. Thank you for this nice idea and build on it. So we have to use people's brains again. If we can, if we can use the, the capacity of brain power of all people, then it's better, right? And then it shouldn't be uh, used for a negative agenda or uh, to do uh, negative things, but okay, what is a good decision for humanity? How can we solve this problem? How can we solve the gas prices? How can we solve... Um, and then a band of people can try to solve each problem on a micro level, but also on a macro level. So I think that's a start at least. And so if you uh, have done this st a step, thinking of possible solutions, it's also good to think about what the ideal situation is. What is the ideal life that you have in mind for yourself, uh, for your company, but also for society at large? And as soon as we know um, we have all written about this, I, I devised an intervention for that, um, so you can write about it. What is your ideal life if there were no constraints? What does your ideal company look like? Or your ideal group look like? Or your ideal family look like even? Um, and even society. Your ideal society if there were no constraints. And then you contrast that with how it is, uh, what is coming, uh, going to happen if we go on like this. Then it might be that people realize they're in this trap. Okay, for now I'm okay, but if I go on like this, I get hungry, I get thirsty, I get tired, and I'm not getting anywhere. And then, okay, I have to step out of this, and if you're out of that, you need a new direction, not going back in this circle again. Exactly, but if it's a void on the outside, you're better off doing repeating the same circle that you, that, that you uh, were treading before. So we have to make it, uh, give it an appeal to step out of that. Uh, yes. Spiral. Yeah, so first people need to notice, because some people don't even notice. I'm fine, I still have food, yeah, I can work a little bit harder to pay my energy prices, I can do this, this and this. They try to solve all the problems, because people and society uh, sometimes gets into a survival mode. And a survival mode um, prohibits you from thinking rationally. 
worth thinking about your situation. Yeah. It's really difficult to think if you're in survival mode. You, the only thing you think of, okay, how am I going to pay for the gas this month? How am I going to get this food on the table? How am I going to... This is literally myself? what's happening in, in the Netherlands currently. In the Netherlands, yeah. but in a lot of countries, I think, yeah. yeah. And in the Netherlands, of course, there's a lot of threats to uh, to the welfare of people because if the gas prices go go up, uh, farmers can't even pay for um, I don't know farming yeah. okay. <laughs> and creating food. Uh, but the, the, yeah, another step is also to make a plan, a concrete plan. Okay, if I know this, if I know what my ideal world is, what am I going to do? What can I contribute to this better world? To my own life, to my and to the life of others, and to society at large. And if you think about what you can do, even small, that will be perfect. Everything that helps society, helps yourself, is a good step. So, everybody can do this intervention. Let us to the future yeah. uh, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, they can implement it. I will link it under this conversation. One last question. Question: Then, do you think we we can outsmart the ends? Of course we can. With. We are humans. We have brains. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we well, can use them. <laughs> let's do like a small step then and talk to Mr. Peterson tonight about uh, what he would do.